All right, so today we're going to be talking about web components and properties and attributes and how we can use custom properties and attributes within our elements. So this black rectangle right here, this is my web component in its default state with no properties or attributes being applied to it. If we jump into our code, if we look in the HTML, so this is the web component itself, same one basically that I've been using the last couple of videos, uh, but I've added a couple of attributes, character and color, but they're not doing anything. You'll notice that these are not attributes that you would normally see in an HTML element. It's not an ID or a title, something that's globally available in all elements. It's something that I've defined for myself. So character and color, we're going to be using that in our element. Okay. In the web component script itself. This is the element that we're building. So this is the black rectangle. We've got a div with the class root. It's applying a default background color of black. There's an H1 element. And then the slot is accepting the H2 content right here and putting that inside of it. Okay. So we're building that basic element. We're appending it to the page. We've covered all this in the last two videos. What I want to do now is I want to talk about properties and attributes and how they apply to web components. Now, if you don't know the difference between component uh, between properties and attributes, uh, if you look at the top there, there's a little link to a video that I did just recently about properties and attributes, the differences between them. And we're going to be applying some of that knowledge here. Okay. So we want to first define what properties are we allowed to use inside or what attributes we're allowed to use inside of our HTML web component. So we're going to define character and color. Those were the two that we had there. And the way we do it is by using this built-in um, method called observed attributes. This method, it's a static method. It belongs to this class right here, this object HTML element. And we're going to get the list of attributes that are inside of there. And we're going to define which ones from there are allowed to be used. So we're going to return character and color. Those were the two that we had defined. Now I could put others in here as well. I could say that uh, you're allowed to have an attribute called beer. It's just, this is the list that we're returning from this method. We're saying, okay, for the element, I want to get the list of observed attributes. So our big bang element is allowed to have these. doesn't mean that somebody can't put in an ID and a title and a class attribute because those are defined globally as part of HTML element. But these are the ones that are custom to what we're building. So I don't need this. I'm just going to remove that because I don't need it. These are going to be the two attributes that we're actually saying are part of the specification for a Big Bang web component. So a Big Bang HTML element can have these. And they mean something. Now, those are the attributes. If we want to have properties, so let's say you've got a variable that references your web component and you want to be able to get to the values of these things with a property instead of using get attribute, the HTML method get attribute to pull the value the string from there. That's what we do here that we're going to sync these things together. We're going to put a uh, get and a set method for each of them. So we'll say get character and there's going to be a set character. And we're going to have a get color and set color. So we're defining here properties, character and color. These are going to be the properties that belong to our big bang element that we've defined. The get, whenever somebody wants to say uh, element dot character, that's going to call the get method. And if they want to say uh, element dot character equals something, that's going to call this set. So with the set, we're actually passing in a value. There's going to be some sort of value being passed in whenever there's a set. For the get, you want to return the current value. So simply enough, we call this dot get attribute, just like you would on any HTML element. 
same thing for get color return this dot get attribute color so we have synced together a property so the big bang element has a property called character and a property called color and they will draw their values from whatever's inside the attribute so we're syncing these things together for set we have to just do the reverse of that we're going to say this dot set attribute and it's the character one and we're setting it to this value now if this value had to be numeric or something like that you could do that you could do any sort of data conversion or if you wanted to do data validation if you wanted to take the value and make sure oh it's a string of this many characters long or it starts with a hashtag or whatever validation you want to do inside the set is where you would do that so inside of here we're going to do the same things this dot set attribute and color is the one that we're setting and it's going to be the value okay so we have now created properties that match these attributes and it doesn't matter which one we use it's going to update the other so i can call set attribute or get attribute um, or i can use the property names either way i'm going to have these values in sync all the time all right so We've defined the allowed list. We've put them together in sync. And then the other thing that you need to, the other method that you really need to be aware of is the one called attribute changed callback. So this method is something that's part of the spec for uh, custom web components. Anytime you provide a value for any attribute inside of there as long as it is part of this list that we defined up here the character and color as long as it's part of that list then this method is going to be called and that means when this initially loads as well we're giving a value to each of these attributes it's going to trigger that method or in my main.js script if i change the value using the property or the attribute these change it's going to trigger this method it's going to tell you what attribute was changed, what its old value was, what its new value was. Those three things are always going to be passed in. It's up to you if you use them, but we could do something like say, okay, if the attribute name is character, okay, I want to do something with that. Or if the attribute name is color, or if it's something else, you can define an if statement for that as well. And then we decide what we want to do inside of there when we have these values now a safe thing to do here as well is to add on a conversion to lowercase so take the string value just in case somebody writes it in uppercase inside their html you want to make sure that you have a match i'm doing three equal signs um, string comparisons in javascript are case sensitive so by doing this i'm making sure that i do always have a match all right now what i want to do is i'm going to create kind of a, a background effect uh, so whatever the value inside of here we can see i have leonard as a value here i'm going to take that and i'm going to put it on there as a paragraph i'm going to position it over everything else i'm going to change the opacity so it looks kind of like a an overlay effect uh, i already have the css defined for this up here this character class this is what i'm going to be doing here's my div it's position relative the paragraph is going to be inside of here that i'm going to add inside of here and it's going to be position absolute inside the relative so i'm going to make it as an overlay over this and the css i've already done for that so down here we have okay it's the character attribute that has a value so we're going to get our div this dot root was defined up here inside the constructor this dot root it's basically my container for the whole thing it's where we appended our html this div so i can use that 
to add my paragraph. This is going to be the div that contains everything. Now, the paragraph that I'm going to add, I'm going to add it the first time, but if it's already there, then I want to select it. I don't want to add a new paragraph every time the value gets changed. Sometimes I'll add, sometimes I'll just use the one that's there. So we will create a variable for the paragraph. And there we are. So we have, we're checking to see if a paragraph exists. If it does, I select it. If it doesn't, I create it. And that's going to be my variable P. So we're going to assign the class name to it. This is the one that was defined in the CSS up at the top of this file. And the text content inside the paragraph is going to be whatever the value is right here that was passed into this method. So that's what's going to be written inside there, whatever we've got in that attribute. So we're generating actual content inside of our element by changing the value of the attribute. It's creating a new paragraph inside of there. And I can call append because if it already exists, I'm just appending it back where it already is. I'm not making any changes to it. It's just, it's going to be there. And then we're going to do the same thing here for the color. We're just going to set a background color, but I'll just jump over here. There we have our attribute showing up with the opacity that's reduced. So it's positioned inside of here. Now, the other one, the color, if that one exists, we're going to take that color and set it as the background color. So we'll say this.style.backgroundcolor. Instead of being the default black, it's going to be the new value. Now, I'm not doing anything with old value here, but we keep it there just to be able to if we need it. And there we have it. So here's the light blue and this. So that's defining what attributes are allowed to be used, creating properties that match the attributes. Now, if you want, these can be spelled differently. They can be different things, just like class list and class name are both used for the values inside of an attribute that's called class in the HTML. We could do something different here. We could have different properties, but most of the time they're going to be the same. Now, I'm going to do something with this actual content. I'm going to uh, go into my main script and say, hey, if I click on my big bang element that's on the page, what do I want to do? Well, I'm going to do it, uh, a toggle. I'm going to change the background color and I'm going to change the text that's written inside of there. So I'll just toggle back and forth between a couple different colors, a couple different uh, names. So we're going to start by going into our function that is run when the person clicks and we will get our big bang reference. That's going to be ev.target, just standard event handling stuff. So here's our event object. The target is the big bang element. And then we're going to say, Hey, your property character is going to be now, if it's already Leonard, we'll change it to Sheldon. If it's Sheldon, we'll change it to Leonard. So we'll just do a little ternary operator for that. So if bb.character is Leonard, there we are. So we're just using a ternary operator to toggle it back and forth between the two of them. And I'm using the properties here, bb.character. So as I click, there we go. We can see that the value is changing and I'm using the property, like I said, to change this value. We could alternatively use the get and set. We could be saying uh, bb.get attribute and bb.set attribute methods instead of the property if we wanted. The other one, the color, we're going to do the same sort of toggle. So we'll say bb.color equals if bb.color is cornflower blue, that was the color that we added in the HTML. 
If it is, we'll change it to light coral, else cornflower blue. And you'll see I'm not using the style properties. I am using these actual properties, which refer back to these actual attributes in the HTML. This isn't CSS. This isn't a CSS property. This is a property that I defined. So we should get the toggle working now. Nope. Oh, okay. I put light color, which is nothing, instead of light coral. That was the value that I was looking for. Light color is nothing, so invalid. There we go. So now we have it working with the toggle for the color and for the character. And that's it. That's working with properties and attributes within custom web components. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.